transaction. So now we're going to connect the receive payment form to this transaction. In practice, when you're tracking this information, you want to tie basically the receive payment, as you can see here, to in essence that particular invoice. And that allows you when you drill down on the invoice to see that that's connected to a receive payment and therefore paid off. And so the journal entry that would be supporting this receive payment, if we then took that money and deposited it directly into the checking account we are imagining here, instead of going to undeposited funds first, which is traditionally how you see it in normal accounting, uh, when you just learn accounting, because we usually just work with cash and not undeposited funds and thinking about the bank reconciliation. And then we'll add in the added wrinkle of undeposited funds. So first, let's just, let's just imagine we got paid now. And we're going to say, okay, that happened on 325, we will imagine. We're getting money, and I'm going to put it directly into the checking account. So we're going to say, we got it. We're going to put it directly into the checking account. Now, why wouldn't I put it directly into the checking account? Sometimes if I got cash, for example, and I got multiple different amounts of cash, and I'm going to deposit it into the bank account at one time, then my goal is to put it into my books in the same format that it's going to go into the bank account. So that's why I might have a two-step process. If, on the other hand, I'm getting paid for a particular invoice and it's going directly into my bank account for that particular amount, same amount, then I can put it directly into my checking account. And when I reconcile my books to the bank account, I shouldn't have a problem and that'll work fine. So that's what we'll do here. We're going to say, all right, that's going to be the 1600 And then the other side is going to go to the accounts receivable now going down. Going to indent that, alignment indent there's the debit and the credit so if we were to post this we're going to say okay we debited the checking account the checking account would be increasing accounts that are assets have debit balances they typically go up with a debit so we're going to say this will be equal to that 1600 increasing the 100,000 by 1600 to 101600 then the accounts receivable is going back down there's something in accounts receivable so i'm going to double click on it go to the end of my formula say plus plus that negative number or the credit so now i have debited and credited it that means the difference or change goes back down to zero so we got the 2000 back to the 2000 here notice there's no impact on the income statement for that second transaction even though that's the point in time that we got the cash because we recorded the income when we did the work which on an accrual basis would make sense because that's when we invoice the client and usually the invoice will be closer to the point in time that we actually did the work, which is when we usually want to record the revenue. So now we're going to record that to the, to the general ledger. Here's the checking account. Let's go on over to the GL general ledger on 325. We're going to say this is going to go up by the 1,000.